Don't be afraid to be great. Wise words from my guest on today's podcast. Jim Kester is vice president of sales for property casualty at Tricor Insurance. And Jim has a great perspective in working uh, with an agency with 34 locations, over 200 people. How do you get the proper mindset and build the right culture to get the growth that you want? Enjoy the podcast. It's a great one. Welcome to the Agent Leader Podcast. My name is Brent Kelly. I am your host, and it is my pleasure to be with you today. It's even a greater pleasure uh, to have a guest with me today, Jim Kester, who is uh, the Property and Casualty VP of Sales at Tricor Insurance in the wonderful state of Wisconsin. I'm going to get to Jim and uh, some of his background, learn more about Tricor, frustrations, challenges, successes. Uh, he might just knock your socks off today. No pressure, Jim, uh, but it's very possible <laughs> communication. So uh, before I get to Jim officially, as always, I want to mention the purpose of the podcast. The mission of the podcast is to help educate, empower, and equip independent insurance agency leaders to become their best version possible. And I also want to mention in terms of best version possible, we are launching our next series in January. So it's not too late if you're listening to this uh, shortly after the release, but the best version possible fast track. This is our 90 day process and roadmap for independent insurance agencies uh, that includes producer training, account manager training, as well as sales leadership training, all integrated together. So go to sitkins.com slash fast track to learn more about that. All right, with that, let's get into the podcast and my interview with Jim Kester. Uh, Jim, first and foremost, welcome. I know you're a listener. Thank you for that, first of all, but welcome to the Agent Leader Podcast. Well, thank you, Brett. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, looking forward to our conversation. Wonderful. Well, again, I've I've known Jim now. I'm, I don't know exactly. I, I should do my exact research, but I would say probably somewhere around five years, right? As far as we first connected and uh, you started working with our organization and uh, you were down in Fort Myers for some of our, our sales leader training and producer training and things. And then we just reconnected again in person uh, in Tampa. And uh, between all that, a number of coaching calls and conversations and emails and all that good stuff. Uh, but I would like to, if you could, Jim, just share a little bit of a background on you and kind of your role and how you got there. And then also could share with the audience a little more about Tricor uh, and what you're all about as an agency. Sure. Thank you. Um, so I've been in the insurance industry for past 20 years and spent the first six of that in a production role, um, built a book of approximately 400,000. So not huge, but not tiny either. So I, I enjoyed that, but always wanted to get into a leadership role. And so um, in 2009, I took on a leadership role with uh, Westland Insurance and started managing a group of producers. Um, we were part of an acquisition then by Tricor in 2015, and mm -hmm. I continued that that leadership role. Um, it's been a great fit at Tricor, provided you know a lot of opportunity, not just for me, but for the others that were part of that acquisition. And currently, I'm uh, my role, as you said, is the vice president of, of sales for our property and casualty. So I'm involved in both commercial lines and personal lines. Um, you know, Tricor is is located mainly in Wisconsin. We're made up of 34 separate locations. Um, we've also have offices in Iowa, Illinois, and and recently Michigan. Um, we're approaching revenue of 50 million and we have approximately 260 full-time employees. Um, our growth strategy, uh, which, you know, that, that's the goal, right? For all of us to grow is, is to go forth, have a, a strong focus on organic, but we also have a targeted um, acquisition as part of our strategy as well. So that's a little bit about, about us. Yeah, it's a great overview, and I, yeah, I'm sure we'll get into this in some of the the, the, the conversation we have today, Jim. But like, yeah, you know, I was thinking about that when you mentioned you said 34 locations, right? Um, and you think about this combination of acquisitions or organic growth, and um, you know, like a lot, again, there's a lot of agencies out there that are doing uh, that and doing both successfully. But it's kind of like uh, you just keep bringing people in, and it's just how do we get them to fit culturally and to buy into our things and, you know, the behaviors that go into that. And um, so there's a lot that goes into that. And I think, you know, your, your success and your growth is in approaching 50 million um, is very, very impressive for lots of reasons. Uh, Jim, for you personally, you mentioned what, you know, 
uh, how many 260 people. I mean, it's a it's a it's a large organization. How many people at this point? When you think about commercial and personal lines in the uh, property and casualty, are you leading or responsible for today? I, I work directly with 13 um, commercial lines producers. Mm -hmm. You know, we have um, I think 29 total. Uh, I work with with some of them, but Bart Straka, who's our president, is also involved in okay. in the uh, commercial lines area. He he works with the rest, and uh, um, that includes a, a division of of transportation specialists. We've also recently taken on the role of working with our first line sales team, and we have a group of thirty eight um, personal risk managers, or that's our our name or or title for our producers. And then I also work with. Uh, uh, two sales managers in that area, as well as uh, one team lead. Yeah, so you got different people in different places and different, I mean, you've got a lot going on. That's why I'm so glad to have you on here to kind of share some of your observations. And I know you're going to bring a ton of value to the audience, with some of the things you've accomplished. And, and actually, you'll share a lot of value with talk right up, get right into it, some of the frustrations and challenges. And <laughs> I always joke, Jim, like, you know, I ask, go to a, a room of agency leaders or producers, or it doesn't really matter, agency professionals. And I'm like, um, how many of you have a frustration? And, you know, it's like, where do we start? There's always frustrations and things we're trying to improve. Um, I want to start off by asking you this, and again, you know, maybe pick your favorite, Jim. I don't know your top one, but when you think about some of the challenges or frustrations, this could be you and your role, maybe the organization. What would be a, a top or key challenge you guys are dealing with right now, and how are you going about addressing it, or how have you gone gone about addressing it? Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, and I've heard this from others that have been on the call, of, and and in and you mentioned that the. the uh, meeting that we had recently in in Florida, they talked a lot about this as the, at the mastermind. And one one of our challenges has been, you know, finding quality producer candidates. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to identify what that person might look like, what skills we want, et cetera. But actually finding those individuals can be can be a challenge. And um, we've recently, or I guess it's probably been maybe six months or so, have hired, uh, we hired a recruiter. Um, we identified that we needed to take a more proactive approach. And so we hired this individual and she, along with our entire HR team is taking a more proactive approach into recruiting the type of talent that we're, that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect of it. And it's been successful. In fact, at, at the moment we've got, uh, we recently brought on one commercial producer, uh, two others that were ready to hire, and we have um, three that are that we're ready to bring on the personal lines area. But along with that, we needed to make sure that, that we could help these individuals be successful. Mm -hmm. And so we, we've invested in a training and development team. Um, we have an individual that is that is leading that, and we've made big strides in developing a more consistent onboarding process, um, putting together more development opportunities for, for our existing staff. Uh, and so really it's that two-pronged approach. You know, one, how do we get the right people in? And then how do we help ensure their success as we move forward? Now, certainly we still have work to do in, in both areas, but um, we're excited about the people that are on that team and the effectiveness that we're having so far. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love that. Again, you kind of going through both of it because it's one of those where some people are like, maybe we've got to train development, but we don't have the people to train and develop. And or it's okay, we're going to go out and we're going to find the people. Then they get there and they go, now what? Right. And obviously, um, there's a lot that's involved in that for sure. Um, and I think it's interesting. I mean, the, the analogy I use oftentimes, and I'm sure if you're a, uh, a regular podcast listener, maybe you're tired of me mentioning this, but I just think it makes a lot of sense. You think about college athletics. Um, you know, you've got the transfer portal, you've got NIL money out there, right? You got people trying to get your recruits, uh, um, right? And you got to have a sales pitch, uh, a why you're a place to go. It's very similar, um, you know, in the insurance, uh, insurance agency space as well. And so I think, you know, something you said, uh, Jim, it's interesting, maybe get your take on this. I know you've got a recruiter uh, that's kind of heading this up, but see a lot of like producers and, and that become leaders, right? They've, they've grown a book of business. You had a book of business, right? And you've had some success, and then we get to leadership. Um, the idea, at least in my mind, uh, is very similar for a leader looking to fill a role. 
is that we've got to have a, a compelling vision, identify exactly the type of personality or the, you know, the kind of person in the role we want, uh, be able to have our points of differentiation, just like we talk about with producers. Um, so again, maybe I'll just, I, I don't mean to throw you a curveball here. Maybe this isn't, but when you think about that with Tricor, what's been some of your unique value proposition or points of differentiation or something like that, whatever term you want to use that goes, this is a pretty cool place to be. Uh, and let us tell you why. I mean, you have to give me, I know there's probably a hundred, but maybe just give me uh, maybe one or two, Jim, that jump out at you. Sure. Um, I guess first I can speak from experience. Um, having been with another agency, being part of the, uh, an acquisition, and then what I learned and, and saw personally and have experienced personally within Tricor. So I can, I can speak to that. Um, the other is really the training and development plan and that we've got a specific department that is that is dedicated to providing those resources and putting together those plans to, to communicate that, you know, we're invested in helping you succeed. It's not really just about bringing you on board and, right. and then good luck. You know, I remember how I started. It was, here it is, here's the phone book, you know, start calling. And right. those days are, are gone, you know, right? You don't get the great people that way. Um, and, and then the other piece of it is that not only is there some initial training, but we're also working on some development. So as you get further along in your career, you know, what is it that we're going to be able to provide that can help you grow, you know, help you help you develop. And so that has been very beneficial for us. Yeah, it's I, I love that uh, in so many ways. I think, you know, the, the, the question I wrote down, I mean, this is just as an agency leader listening to this is like if someone that you were wanting to bring on your team or certainly those that are currently on your team before they think about leaving, right? It's a, it's a tough world out there is if they ask you this question, how will you develop me over the next X amount of years? Or what's my path, right? I mean, again, people need to live up to that, right? There's individual accountability, but uh, I, I believe in the phrase that leaders see before and they see more others, uh, see, see before and they see more than others, meaning that you've got to be able to paint a compelling vision. And this is the path that we see for people like you and where it goes. And they go, oh, okay, I, I see where this may go for me. And again, you you at Tricor being able to provide those resources is critical. I do have a shameless plug here. We also want to make sure what we do at Sitkins is to help empower that as well, where we've got our ongoing programs and they continue to plug in. So uh, and, and again, all kidding aside of that, we you know we believe in what we do. I know you guys have used our resources in different ways and we want to continue to do that. Um, but there's an investment cost to that, both in time and money. And not all agencies do that. Um, and so again, part of that is just to say, listen, we are a development and growth organization. So to do that, we're going to help you develop and grow. I said that says a lot about, about Tricor. Um, I want to ask you, Jim, about what you guys do really well. And I'm sure there's, a, I know there are a number of things that you could answer here. Um, maybe this is my corny phrase, what's Tricor superpower? Um, but what is it that you do really well? And you think about successes you have all achieved as an organization, or maybe it's your department. Um, and then here's my second part of this. How have you sustained it or how do you plan on sustaining that? Because I think it's one thing to be successful in something, right? And, and you know, just think about going back to sports. It's one thing to win a championship. Winning that second one's really hard. So what are successes you've had at Tricor and how are you going about to replicate or maintain that success moving forward? Sure. Um, if I could back up one second. Absolutely. If, if that's okay. We were talking about, you know, painting that picture. And so we talked about, you know, how we bring you on board and what we can do. The other thing that we have at, at Tricor is that, you know, we've got a, a number of seasoned or um, successful producers that have developed, you know, books of over a million, 600, 700,000 that have been with the organization for 20, 25 years. And to be honest, being able to point to not only the longevity, but the level of success mm -hmm. that our producers have been able to attain um, is also, you know, it kind of completes that picture that here's how you get going. Here's how we help you in the middle. And then here's what that can look like at, at the end. So I wanted to make sure and, and, and add that. But in, in terms of success, you know, I would say that it's really some of the more basic things. Or, and I say basic because they were some of the initial things that we pulled from the um, Sitkin program. And so the two I would say, and I know you asked for one, but the, the greatest success because they fit together 
is really the high performance teams mm -hmm. and the green zone. Mm -hmm. And so this whole concept of having the same goals, but different roles. Mm -hmm. And so what we've seen happen in that is that the relationships with our account management team, regardless of, of division, with our producers that, you know, that relationship has grown, um, it's gotten stronger. Um, it's freed up time for our producers to be in the green zone. Yeah. Um, but it's also freed up time for our account managers, not being bothered by the agents every other minute to accomplish the work that they need to do in terms of having a solid continuation process, et cetera. And so stronger relationships have been part of that. But the other results is that have been that our retention continues to be in, in the mid nineties. Um, and from a new business standpoint, we've grown our new business year over year, each of the last three years. Mm -hmm. And right now our organic growth in commercial lines is trending over 10%, which is the first time we've been in double digits. So, yeah. and, and I think that, the high performance teams, the green zone approach, and, and our people obviously um, are really a big part of that. How do we you know, continue that is that it's something that we talk about regularly. It's something that we communicate monthly as we share what our results were for the month and giving credit to, you know, if successful, why we were successful. Um, and, and those are key components of it. And the other part is that it is part of our hiring and onboarding process. We start early talking about what that relationship looks like for our, our producers to understand the value of having that is in, in, in the other way, our account managers as well. And so we start out in the beginning to um, get them going. And that's part of how we continue that moving forward. Yeah. It's, I, I want to go a little deeper in this um, because I think th those are important points. And I, I know I talk about those concepts quite a bit in the podcast, but some people are probably like, What's a green zone? Uh, so I want to I want to get a little deeper in that, uh, Jim, with you, kind of what that means and how you all see it, you know, and use it at Tricor. But I think it comes back a little bit too, and you, you know, I, I appreciate you referencing the fact that you know the experienced producers that people can see on there. That's a huge part of culture, and you know, we all know this. Like you know, culture is a it's a buzzword, but it's a, it's it's got a lot of different different definitions, really. I mean, out there in the world, what does that mean? Um, but certainly with the organization the size of Tricor, like it takes a while, a long time to really get the culture level that people want. But here's the great thing about culture. It doesn't mean it can't go down, but once you build it up, there's a, there's a model in place. Just like people seeing producers that have been doing a certain thing for a while. Oh, that's kind of how we do it here at Tricor. And so it's really neat to hear, Jim, that, you know, newer people come in, they're already entering Right. The fact of, oh, there's this green zone and HBT and this is this is how we do things here um, versus having to you know recreate everything. So here's um, I guess what I want to get your, your thoughts on this a bit deeper. Um, you know, green zone. And again, for the audience that's never heard this, if you're a first time listener, I'll keep it really simple. The green zone is when producers are doing stuff that creates sales <laughs> results based stuff. Um, and that's as simple as I can make. And in fact, we always joke that the definition of a producer and whatever title you want to give, but they're a producer at heart is to produce. It's one who produces, right? So part of the green zone is we see so often that producers are spending half or way less in some cases actually in the results or slash green zone. They're trapped by activities and services and everything else that goes on. And what happens, Jim, and this is where I want to get your feedback is that we'll have, you know, a producer could even go through a camp and they would go, man, I love this. I want to get in the green zone. Let's fire it out. I'm in the green zone. Well, then there's a follow-up to that. How do I do that? Because I've already got all this stuff. Um, how do I unpack some of those things? And it's really important to note that the, the services and reactive things, this isn't a, a dump off to a service team that's already overwhelmed in many cases. It's understanding that we've got to be much more intentional in how we communicate. And as you said, Jim, same goal, different roles. And having that appreciation, that respect, and that trust that both of our roles are challenging and we both need to be accountable to certain things. And I really love what you said, and I want to hear more about this, is that when the producers are in the green zone, what we typically have talked about in the past is like producers get in the green zone and go sell. 
Um, what I love what you said is reinforces that when the producers get in the green zone, the service team in their own way also gets in the green zone because the producers stop bothering them so darn much uh, with things that they're already taking care of. So how have you seen that? I mean, at Tricor, because it's, I guess it varies by, you know, agency or by location, so to speak, but like, what transformation have you seen in that where there's been more intentional communication and there's been more of an appreciation and respect of trust in some ways, Jim, at Tricor? Yeah, I would say that it's something that we've seen that we had to have some patience with. It didn't doesn't happen overnight. And sure. on both sides of that equation, the service side as well as the the producer side, you know, we've got veterans that have been used to operating in a particular way. And so as we challenge them to try this high performance team meeting first, you know, we got good at doing that. And then we challenge them to actually live kind of what the the outcome or what the hope of of what that provides is they start gaining some confidence in in the um, people that they work with and in understanding that well this guy doesn't always cave in because I'm not available or I am actually getting more done because, um, I'm not bothering my account manager, you know, every minute of the, of the day if I come prepared. And so we've seen the preparation for those meetings improve. We've seen, you know, growth in in um, in those areas. And that's kind of the transformation. And you can see it. You can tell based on results, based on communication, those, those, and this isn't dependent on division. Right. But you can see where those relationships are the strongest. And I can almost guarantee that where they are, these meetings or that concept is is alive and well. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. And yeah, I mean, this is I mean, every agency is different. You're right. This isn't something that you just snap your fingers and, hey, we're all good now. Right. It takes uh, and I think, you know, what, what I wrote down here and I appreciate this, Jim, is I wrote down consistency beats intensity. Uh, I'm not anti-intensity. Um, I think we could do things with intensity, but problem is, Hey, rah, rah, this thing we're going to go do. And we don't talk about it again for six months or whatever it is. And well, that doesn't lead to anything versus, Hey, this is going to take a while, but we're going to do it week by week, by week, by week, by week and reinforce it. Um, so that becomes part of our culture and our DNA of our agency. And you guys have done a great job with that. And I also think it's really interesting. I don't know if, 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 if Tricor, maybe this is in certain pockets, um, a lot of our agencies, you know, the producers, kind of gravitate to a lot of some of these concepts quickly uh the account managers maybe it takes them a while to warm up but usually when they warm up they go i wish we would have done this a long time ago uh have you seen some of that with tricor we, we have heard some, some of that you know when i talk to the team leads in the account managers you know they talk about how much they appreciate it because again it frees up time for them they understand what they need and it allows them just to go and do the work that they're so good at doing yeah yeah it's good stuff all right. Um, I know one of my questions, but you kind of already answered to a degree about some of the stuff uh, that you're doing with Sitkins. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add with this, because I don't want this to be a paid promotion. That's not the goal. But obviously, <laughs> uh, you've been with this for a while. I think the bigger thing is just what other agencies can learn, uh, certainly in terms of concepts of things to think about. So you, know, you mentioned HPT and Green Zone. Anything else, Jim, that's jumping out at you and some of the things you've done at Tricor successfully there? Well, you know, there's a number you can use the reverse referral strategy and, and so forth. But I, what I prepared for the, this this call was really something that you've talked about, Roger's talked about, and it really is about having that, you know, MBA, mastering those basic activities. Yeah. And that, that's one of the things I've probably taken the most because it can apply to a lot of the different strategies and things that you do, but understanding that and the focus that, Success really comes from executing those basic fundamentals consistently, but exceptionally well. Yeah. You know, there is no silver bullet. I've heard that, you know, time and time again, you know, from folks on your podcast and other places. And it really is about being exceptionally good at the basics. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I won't. I won't try to get on my soapbox here. I love to talk about that. But it's here's the here's the challenge with basics. They're not always very exciting, right? I mean, like that's part of it. And um, I think we want to skip past it. 
but I could give a number of examples and I'm sure you could too, Jim, and just different things and you working with your team. But like, it's like, I already know that. I already, I know, I know, I know. I, I, I know about my pods. Okay. Your point of differentiation. Well, how well can you explain them? And what questions have you? Well, I, I don't know. You know. I know referrals are important. All right. Well, let's work on how exactly you do that. Well, I don't. So we could go down the line, right, of some of these things that we would assume are basic, and I suppose they are, but like anything worth doing, you might as well do it really well. And that's what we see time and time again that, um, and certainly, you know, Jim, you've been around um, you know, other agencies and other producers, uh, whether it's part of our group or others. And it's always interesting, you'll talk to someone who's like built a large book of business or successful in whatever way, from a business perspective, certainly. And you're like expecting this like magic answer. Like I did this one thing that no one else has ever done and I perfected it, right? Maybe there's a couple of those out there with certain things, but it's always like, they tell you and you're like, oh, that's it? Yeah, I did these five things really, really well. Again and again and again and again and again. So and I, it reminds me too, there's a, one of our producers we work with. He's like, I'll be honest, a lot of stuff that I do, I know it's boring, but guess what? Because if I do these boring things really well, my life isn't. I get to do a lot of stuff other people don't. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great <laughs> answer. <laughs> I was like, good for you. <laughs> so it's good stuff. All right, Jim, are you ready for the final question of the interview? I am. I'm and ready. You, you know where I'm going. I asked this to all of my <laughs> guests. So I certainly want to give you the opportunity to answer. But if you were having a conversation with the younger version of you, um, in fact, the younger version of you was actually communicating to you currently and said, why is... Jim, who's been doing this longer than I have, I'm looking for one piece of advice that'll help me grow in my career. And this could be personally too. What would be the one piece of advice that you would give? Yeah, that, I mean, I, I gave that a lot of thought and kind of reflected back on, on some of the other things that I've heard. And and really all I could come up with was, was this, and that is don't be afraid to be great. Ooh. Say that again. And, and the idea, I, I said, don't be afraid to be great. Hmm. And I, I boiled that down into a, a few things. And um, but oftentimes I, I see and and you know, even sometimes not even, and, and I'll speak for myself, is that sometimes we get in our own way because we're really afraid to be our best version possible, right? We're afraid to do the work or whatever. So what I wrote after that was don't be afraid to put in the work. Don't be afraid to have a mentor. Don't be afraid to practice your craft. Don't be afraid to build strong relationships. And then last I said, don't be afraid to trust and believe in yourself. Hmm. Hmm. That's really good. I, um, you know, I ask this question to all my guests and I get a lot <laughs> of different answers. Um, and again, there's no wrong answer, but I, I, I don't think I've heard it in that way before. And you're right. I think, um, man, it's I, I'm thinking of myself. I've had conversations where all of us, I don't care, you know, they call it the imposter syndrome, right? We all think that, oh, well, I'm not really good enough or whatever. And and this is true whether you've you have done some really good stuff, at least the people think, or maybe you're struggling, but you're right. I mean, it's like that little thing between our ears so often holds us back. And um, you know, wherever that comes from, it's like don't don't risk um you know, don't, don't allow the fear to get in the way of your greatness. I just, I love that, Jim. Anything else you want to add to that? Cause I really like where you're going there. No, that that's, that's, that's all I can yeah. come up with. Well, I think what's all you can come up with is really good. So thank you. I'm <laughs> well, glad that's you. all you come up with. Uh, anything more would just start to confuse me, Jim. You know, I'm not a very smart guy. I got to do my best to hang in here. So um, listen, Jim, before we wrap up here again, I want to respect your time. Um, anything you want to, say before we go any parting words you don't have to i don't put you on the spot but anything you want to say to the listeners out there in agent leader podcast world i guess the only thing i would say is is really you know thank you to brent to you roger the rest of your team um carrie's now on board and and just the other members of, of the group you know we've really learned a ton um as we've been involved with with sitkins and, and um the resources and and really just the opportunity to to reach out and and kind of share best practices and learn from others has been valuable to us and we look forward to that continuing so thank you for the time and the opportunity we appreciate it yeah jim thanks so much i mean you had a ton of value with what you shared today and 
Um, you know, listen, our, our theme here, if you're looking at my image, I know some of you are listening to audio only, best version possible, the book and the process. And I mentioned the best version possible, Fast Track, which is a, a 90 day integrated roadmap to help agencies kind of you know, get to be that catalyst to growth in your agency. And I mean, growth, not just numbers, but as Jim said, like growth and how you think, um, right. Um, and up leveling that because, um, you know, this may be a bit cliche, but, you know, in the agency world in particular, you can look around and be like, we're doing pretty good, right? And you probably are. Um, I don't doubt that for a minute, but you know, the reason we have best version possible is I want to all think about that. I do and go, okay, I mean, it's just good for today, but is this my best version possible? And I love what Jim said. I think we have a maybe a potential title for this. Don't be afraid to be great, all right? Don't be afraid to be great. So thank you, Jim, again, appreciate that. Thanks for being a listener of the Agent Leader Podcast. We'll talk to you again soon.